That's what right. was your introduction to Pedro Sauer? How did how did you guys meet? Well, this is a really good story. Um, I was a wrestling coach, assistant coach at BYU, and I'm sitting in my home one day, and I get a phone call, and it's a guy named Steve Bishop, who's a LDS missionary in Brazil, who met Pedro Sauer in Brazil and convinced him to move to Provo, Utah, of all places. And he's the one of only two non-Gracie family member black belts. And so when the Gracies moved to America, most of them settled in L.A., but Pedro moved to Provo to have a separate club. And so I get a call from Steve Bishop, and he says, hey, Mark, the greatest jiu-jitsu fighter in the world is in town. He's talking about Hicks and Gracie. He goes, do you want to fight him? And, <laughs> and I asked him, what are the rules? And this guy, I could just kill him for saying this. He goes, he's trying to intimidate me. He goes, there are no rules. And I was like, really? No rules at all? What are we going to do? Commit a homicide? So I wasn't going to back down. I'm gonna let <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll fight him. Tell him to come to the BYU wrestling room, you know, a week from Thursday or whatever. And we'll fight it out. This is kind of like a grammar no, school thing. For yeah. no money or nothing. Just sure. Is that what it is? Meet you at the playground well, at the school. The guy lied. This is what pisses me off the most. It wasn't anything like this guy said, but the way he set it up created such antagonism and opposition between me and Hickson. It was very difficult for us to overcome that. And it was it the same on his like end? That. Was it the same on his end or was it just kind of coming from you? Because you're obviously pretty alpha. What, what do you mean this coming from? Well, here, was Hickson under the same mindset that you no, requested no. no rules? No. Matter of fact, he's okay. even said, he's been on record. He goes, you know, it didn't feel like it, it should have happened. And I know now why, because of the way this idiot tried to in intimidate me and set this whole thing up. Like, there's, like we're, we're enemies all of a sudden, you know? Well, it turned out we're, we became great friends. And it, but I didn't, anyway, what happened was I show, I have to wait, I have to go to the NCAA, so I can't even think straight. I'm thinking about this the whole week. I don't know who this guy is. And I'm like, what's going to happen? We, am I going to have to gouge his eyes out, bite his throat out? I don't know. I mean, Rip his heart out. <laughs> whatever it takes to win, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to. So I was just like, all right. So the day finally comes and uh, I walk in the BYU wrestling room and I see Hickson on his butt scooting towards Alan Albright, my head, my boss. He was the head wrestling coach and he's trying to hook his heels and as soon as I walk in, everybody stops what they're doing. Hickson stands up. He comes over to me, and I can see he's got really thick cauliflower ears. I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. So he goes, are you the guy? I go, yeah, I'm the guy. Are you the guy? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I'm the guy. And he goes, what I do, I'm, I can't really imitate a Brazilian accent, but it's like, what I do is I elbow, I knee, I headbutt, I punch, I kick. But today we're just going to submission grappling until one of us taps out. And I was like, thank God there's not going to be a homicide. <laughs> <laughs> so we go at it and uh, I take him down. He stands in the middle of the room just standing straight up. And he just goes like this. And I was like, okay, here we go. And so I tack him, I take him down. I got him in a cradle for about 20 minutes. And <laughs> finally, were you talking finally, to him? Were you talking huh? to him while he's in a cradle? Were you talking smack? No, I never talked to anybody. I, I wrestled. So 20 minutes in a cradle, no conversation. Got, there's no conversation. Wow. Got, that's intense, man. That's, that's and so uh Finally, my grip just gave out. 20 minutes in a cradle is a hell of a long time to hold your <laughs> grip. And he threw both of his legs around my upper body, and I didn't know what he was doing. And I kind of let him do it because I wanted to just, this didn't make any sense to me. You know, I'm a wrestler, you know, we never did anything like this. 
So he throws his legs over and goes for a triangle and he gets me a triangle and I tap out. And I was like, wow, that was pretty cool. And so I go, let's go again. And so we went again and I'm on top of him for about another 20 minutes. Now I don't have any jujitsu training. It's my first jujitsu experience. And it's against the best guy in the world. <laughs> what am I? And so anyway, I, I'm trying to make up moves on the fly. You know, I knew I broke the Turk's arm in, in the Olympics with a double wrist lock. So I knew. We'll get that. <laughs> and I, I knew to keep my chin down and my elbows in from some judo training I had in Colorado Springs. And so that was pretty much the only thing I knew. Because if, if you don't practice these moves, you, you can't do them. I mean, and if you look at all the moves in jiu-jitsu, they're against all the rules of wrestling. As a matter of fact, if you open up a wrestling rule book and you read it and you see all the moves that are against the rules, it's like a jiu-jitsu instruction manual. <laughs> so I'm like making stuff up on the fly and I've been on top of him for 40 minutes now and I can't get anything. Of course, he's an expert at staying out of submission holes. That's all he does. So he stayed out of all my attempts and I'm on top of him. And I thought, man, I've been on top of this guy the whole time and I can't get anything on this guy. Maybe I should let him get on top of me. So I let him reverse me. And me being a wrestler, I had brainwashed myself to go belly down. So I turned belly down. I got my arms out like I'm trying to keep him getting turned and freestyle. You know? And he just, <laughs> dumbest thing he could do, right? And he just starts weaving in this uh, rear naked, you know, and finally he's got it and I'm tapping out again. And after that, I was just like stunned that uh, I had never even considered anything like this even existing before. And I, and I love Hicks. Hickson is, he said something to me that made me love him. He goes, Mark, you're the toughest guy I've ever gone against. I was like, I love you, man. So <laughs> anyway, it's so well, I hear devil's I, advocate. I, I, devil's I, advocate. You went 40 <laughs> minutes with the guy without knowing submission defense and you didn't get submitted. Well, I did twice. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. But you went, you went a 40 minute span and then a 20 minute span. No, it was 20 minutes. 2020. Okay, 2020. Okay, fair enough. I, what, what I find interesting is, you know, the wrestlers, Four rounds, always, Chris. the wrestlers are always in the mind game, you know? Like, this is the first challenge match I've ever heard of any Gracie that Mark said, yeah, bring him down to my school. You know what I mean? That's so cool. He already called, he already was dominating the mind game there with the wrestling, <laughs> with the wrestling mindset. I like that because everybody else goes to the Gracie Academy, not this time. That's cool. You were in the ball game. <laughs> All right. So, so anyway, how, does that that session end? Huh? how does that session progress from there? Okay. So after it's over, I find out that he's got a student of his, Pedro Sauer, one of his black bills right there living in Provo. And so I call up Pedro one day and I say, Pedro, can I be your student? He's like, oh yeah, come on down. I'm going to shoot my friend, you know, come on down. And so I became a student for like three years prior to the UFC, uh, which was a huge advantage because Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu had just come to America. So nobody knew it. So I was going to be one of the few guys to know this. And I think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the most effective standalone martial art that there is. I mean, wrestling is very close. And the combination of wrestling and Jiu-Jitsu together is 10 times better than either one separately. But uh, I knew because I was one of the few people that knew jujitsu that when I fought in the UFC, I was going to have a huge advantage. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.